This is Jakari Jackson for InfoWars.com. We're being joined today by Cody Wilson. You guys know him. He's bringing us this breaking news update talking about his ghost gunner. Now, you guys recall Cody. He's been at the center of the, I don't know if you want to call it the controversy, of the printable gun phenomenon. He's produced many firearms, many uh, parts of firearms to go along with this. Also, he's been known for the dark wallets. You guys know him from that, the people who keep up with the Bitcoins. But today he's going to talk to us about the ghost gunner uh, processing and when he tries to ship it out, he's now having some uh, pushback from FedEx when he wants to put out his product. So Cody, can you start from the beginning and tell us basically uh, how you got to the process of now making the ghost gunner and what problems you're having when you're trying to ship it out? Yeah, the, the ghost gunner was, thank you by the way, Jakar, it's a pleasure to be back. Yes. The ghost gunner was a joy to engineer and we spent the last few months uh, really engineering out and, and conducting our manufacturing of the device. And for the past few months, it seemed uh, clear to me that I had a FedEx freight and FedEx, FedEx business shipping accounts. I would just use FedEx to fulfill uh, the machine when I wanted to ship it to the consumers who, who purchased the machine so far. And this is, I did not think this would be controversial because FedEx uh, caters to the, to the gun industry, has NRA, FedEx Advantage program, et cetera. Uh, and anyway, when I finally solicited them for the ultimate rates, to do business to consumer for my business, they began to demur and they began to make excuses. And then ultimately last week they said, despite my submitting all of the legal work I've done, all the clear memorandum and stating how the law was obvious, that this was just a tool that people can make to make their guns, which is constitutionally protected activity. They said, because people can use my machine to make firearms, they would not ship my machine. They would not offer me any rate at all. They do not want my business. This is a CNC concept, a milling machine, which notably is good enough to take an 80% AR-15 lower receiver, take it to 100%. You can make an AR-15 in the comfort of your own home, unserialized, without government surveillance, but you can do a number of other things with it because it's just a mill at the end of the day. It is just a tool. It is just a tool that you can use to make what you want. Defense Distributed sells it and, and gives software that you can use to make gun parts with it. But FedEx is very uncomfortable with the idea that you could use it to do this. Have you ever had any other type of pushback? Because I know you've made uh, actual, you know, weapons. Uh, I guess you don't ship those around, but have you ever encountered this type of opposition before? Well, that's a great that's a great question. With the FedEx example, I have a federal firearms license. FedEx will ship guns for me, right? And have done that before. FedEx will ship guns all over the country. Are they trying to tell me that this? What I'm doing here is now more dangerous than a gun because theoretically that seems to be what's happening. They're more uncomfortable with the idea, the abstract idea that anyone can have a gun or that Eric Holder has them on a short enough leash uh, that it, this is more dangerous to them than hazardous materials and guns, which are things that they will ship. On an AR-15 rifle, the lower receiver uh, is, is the part that holds the trigger group and to which you can insert a magazine. Uh, which feeds the rest of the gun, but also legally it's important because it's the regulated component, the serialized component traditionally of these guns in commerce. And so by my assertion here, my claim, I, I think, is that though FedEx is trying to hide behind color of law, really they're, they're more interested in the political implications of, the, of my device than its legality. They don't like the idea. They are uncomfortable with the idea that people could have such easy access to guns and will perform by extension what Eric Holder and the administration cannot do, which is, I, I, this is not why I believe InfoWars audience might be interested in this, where Eric Holder has been unable to succeed, FedEx is comfortable, you know, rounding out the situation. That's right, because I think what you're mentioning here, Cody, is Operation Choke Point. Uh, they're targeting various uh, gun owners, uh, you know, banks, things such, such as that, trying to stop people from being able to uh, process, uh, whether it's firearms, or ammunition, things to that nature. So you're saying that that's what you feel that you're experiencing at this moment? I, I think it is it is easy to paint that picture now. And I'll tell you, I, I didn't really lean on this when it happened to me earlier, but my bank, uh, my banking network, my, my credit card processing network back in November dropped me. Uh, other, other things happened to prevent me from more easily taking payments along the way. And now ultimately this shipping agency won't fulfill for my product. What we're finding is a constellation or a, a closed loop of businesses and government working together to agree by consensus that there's only certain ways you're going to be able to get the gun, and they will not admit the possibility that you can constitutionally make these things for yourself without surveillance or, or without commercial or ATF intervention. Is anything that you're involved in illegal? Absolutely 
not. The law could not be clear on this matter. You can have a tool, you can possess a tool, you can make a rifle without a serial number in these United States, even today. These people don't even want to admit that this is still a possibility in 2015. It seems like with you, they're hitting the grassroots and now coming after the small businessman and trying to stop your process. Jakari, it is, it is everything right now. And people who own AR-15s, they know, especially in January and February of this year, the ATF has gone after CNC manufacturer of AR-15s. The ATF this month controversially began to ban the second most popular stock of ammunition for the AR-15. Uh, large corporations and banking networks will not permit or are trying to ghettoize our activity. It is, it is an attack from all sides, all divisions of the quote-unquote civil society to prevent good people, the rifleman, from his birthright. And I think the InfoWars audience should know that I'm under attack as well. <laughs> they should know that I am making a legal product to, to allow them to make a rifle, and I'm probably going to have to smuggle it out of my own city because the, the, large, the large shipping cartels are in league with the administration. And I honestly, today, I do not know how I'm going to ship it. This is, this is a huge matter, and I think they should know what these companies think of their Second Amendment. With this, with this wall of collusion, Jakari, between the government and these large corporations and the kinds of talking points you see on TV all the time, basically the, the elite only admit that there is a right to buy arms, not a right to bear them, not a right to make them, uh, to own them, to transport them. They're trying to, to ghettoize and marginalize and cut away at every possible corner uh, of, of these activities. And this is, this is a wall that I have bumped into that I think few people are aware of People should know that there is strong resistance right now to the idea of the private manufacturer of firearms in the private world, not just the public world. How many orders do you have right now? Uh, Jakari, I have over a thousand orders for fulfillment right now, and I don't know how I'm going to do that if I have to go, like go to retail, <laughs> go to retail windows and ship these one by one. If, if someone won't cater to my business to fulfill my product, this is an easy way of of de facto putting me out of business. And let's say you eventually do get some way to uh, ship these across the country. How could people get a hold of this product? Uh, people can go to ghostgunner.net. They can go to deftis.org. Uh, it's very easy to explain the product. We demonstrate it. We explain what, what it does, what it can do. Uh, they can order online. Very simple. Uh, we accept Bitcoin. We accept credit card, PayPal. Um, it's easy to buy it. I just got to tell you, it's getting <laughs> difficult to ship it. So I definitely thank you for coming out and telling your tale, Cody, and uh, I wish you the best of luck. Well, thank you, Shikari. Thank you for giving me a platform to share my story.